Welcome to Eliesa Shroud of Dusk Deck Tech. In this special bonus video, I'm going to be showing you how to get a life. Or rather, how to get multiple lives. First thing we have to do is meet the commander. Eliesa Shroud of Dusk. Two white white black for a 5-5 five, five flyer with lifelink. Rather than pay two for each previous time you've cast this spell from the command zone this game, pay two life that many times. Whenever a player casts a spell, they lose two life. This deck is looking to keep Liesa on the battlefield and take advantage of her mutual life tax on spells by staying at the highest life total. We will gain bonuses from all of our life gain and keep opponents at a low life total so that we can finish them off in one fell swoop. So the first thing we need to do is make sure we can gain a bunch of life every game. Our version of Liesa has an aggressive slant to it, and we're looking to get on board with creatures early in the game to apply some pressure. Since we have plenty of creatures, we are running the typical suite of Soul Sisters card, Soul Warden, Soul's Attendant, and Oriac Champion. They're going to give us a steady flow of life to make sure Liesa can't hurt us too badly. We even have ways of consistently finding them in Ranger of Eos and Ranger Captain of Eos, which can find a plethora of other creatures as well. To help beat down early, we have creatures like Nighthawk Scavenger, a normally mediocre commander card. However, in this deck, it can provide important life swings, and its power does scale with the game. Kurneros, Hound of Athreos, is also here to beat in with its evasion, and the added bonus of its Graph Digger's Cage ability makes this pup a potential hate piece on legs. And of course, when you think life gain beatdown, you have to include Sarah Ascendant. In this deck especially, it will always be a 1-mana 6-6 Flying Lifelinker. Hitting multiple times with this can put opponents in a really tight spot. On another side of the life gain spectrum, we have Sangromancer, which will trigger continuously as threats are answered and give you a giant life boost if a board wipe hits the table. As a corner case bonus, you become immune to Nekusar players. One creature that pairs well with old Sangromancer is Aili, Eternal Pilgrim. This deck actually gets to take advantage of her final ability to use her as repeatable removal, and we can cash in any creatures that have already served their purpose to keep our life total high, or gain value after a removal spell targets one of our threats. And hey, while we're gaining all this life, can I interest you in doubling that with Rock's Faithmender or Alhamaret's Archive? The Archive even doubles as extra card draw, and is a little tougher to remove. Heliod's Intervention is just an amazing white staple in our opinion, and this deck gets to leverage that second mode better than almost any other. So that is an easy include for this deck. Finally, we have two cards that can gain you massive bursts of life at instant speed, Benevolent Offering and a land, Blighted Step. If you're in need of a large surge of life, these cards will get the job done, and Blighted Step, while normally not a very good card, comes at the cost of a land slot, so we aren't giving up much by including it. Now that we know how this deck plans to gain a bajillion life, the question becomes, how can we take advantage of it for even more value? Life gain is notorious for not doing much on its own, since EDH is a format full of infinite combos and large attacks. One of the best things to do with life is to turn it into card advantage, so we're packing staples like Necropotence and Ad Nauseam, powerful cards on their own that become completely absurd in our life gain shell. Each one of these can give you the resources needed to seal a victory by itself. Dawn of Hope and Well of Lost Dreams are slower ways to draw cards, but we need some redundancy and are happy to invest a few mana in them early and then sink a large amount into them during the late game. Another way to gain advantage is to take some away from opponents. So let's exile all their artifacts and creatures with Ajani, Strength of the Pride. This card is a total house in life gain decks and basically functions as a sorcery board wipe when your life is high. Karlov of the Ghost Council and Witch of the Moors also serve as repeatable removal effects. Karlov can even evolve into a huge threat on his own from all of our Soul Sister triggers. We're going to have them every game. With Liesa consistently taxing every spell a player casts, we want to keep our opponents on a lower life total to limit their option. With Liesa as our biggest threat, other key pieces may go unanswered, and we'll have no problem casting her over and over and over again by paying life. The best way to ensure opponents don't gain life is by preventing it altogether with Erebos, God of the Dead, who is also a card drawing outlet to sink some of our extra life and mana into. Suture Priest performs double duty while being a soul sister for us and an annoyance for our opponents, keeping their life total down while also preventing any infinite loops that involve a creature entering the battlefield on their side. Blind Obedience is going to stop them from getting off to fast starts by inhibiting all their mana rocks and creatures the turn they hit the field. Add on the extort ability to ping them and bolster your own life, and you've got a stellar card. Cambal, Council of Allocation, does a pretty good Liesa impression, and makes up for his less frequent triggers by gaining you some life too. With Cambal and Liesa out, your opponents are not going to be slinging many spells. For larger bursts of damage, there's Commander Classic card Exsanguinate, a card we basically haven't ever put into a deck until now. Normally this card serves as a big mana finisher, and it can be that in this deck, but we can even fire it off for a lesser amount to pressure life totals and keep us out of range of attackers. We also have Debt to the Deathless, which fills a similar role but can kill opponents more easily. 
and Exsanguinate spending 6 total mana is equal to a Debt to the Deathless with 6 total mana, and any point after that, Debt is more powerful. There's also Newcomer Zoth Consumption, an MDFC from Zendikar Rising that fills our third big drain slot in the place of probably Torment of Hellfire. Now that's all fine and dandy, but how are we going to seal the deal and win the game? We want something more than a big X spell to finish the job. We can start off with some of the lesser win conditions of the deck. These aren't guaranteed wins, but they can get the job done some of the time. Archangel of Thune has an awesome life gain trigger, one that we could potentially use for a huge lethal attack. The Soul Sisters make it pretty easy to stack up those triggers all in one turn. Next is Command the Dreadhorde. This can vary in power level, but if our life total is where we want it to be, this is a discounted Rise of the Dark Realms that can also take Planeswalkers. There's nothing quite like using your opponent's cards against them. Last of our three non-guaranteed win conditions is an EDH newcomer, Akroma's Will, which doubles as board wipe protection, but really wants to give your creatures flying, first strike, double strike, lifelink, indestructible, and protection from all colors during your turn so you can alpha strike the table. So now we can move on to our more reliable ways to win. These will be how we end most of our games with this deck. First, we have two similar cards in Angel of Destiny and Felidar Sovereign. If we can protect the Sovereign and make it to our next upkeep, we straight up win the game. So that can be easy mode if we get it out early or stop opponents from killing it. If Angel of Destiny sticks around for a turn, then it's going to kill whoever it attacks. We only need 55 life to meet its claws, and the Angel itself is going to gain us 4 more when it attacks. And if you've been paying attention up until this point, then you know we have plenty of ways to gain life. The next entry is a 2 card infinite combo that doesn't cost us very much in deck building. Heliod, Suncrowned, and Walking Ballista. Heliod cares about gaining life and can boost our dorks into real threats or stack counters on Liesa for extra life gain, but if we draw Ballista or we can find it with Ranger of Eos or Ranger Captain of Eos, then we can just deal infinite damage by giving Ballista lifelink. Once it deals a damage and gains you a life from the lifelink ability, Heliod sees it and can put that counter right back on the Ballista for an easy infinite loop. Our second infinite combo involves two cards that we're going to play anyways. The first of which is Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. He has a Sanguine Bond effect and is another way to bully players into lower life totals, restricting their choices when Liesa is in play. But couple him with an inverse effect, Exquisite Blood, and as soon as an opponent loses life or you gain life, each enchantment will trigger off of each other for an infinite number of times and your opponents will die. Lastly, we have one of our favorite combos here at the Nitpicking Nerds studio. It involves Bolas's Citadel, a huge card advantage artifact and potential win condition in its own right. We are going to have plenty of life to sink into this card. Next in the sequence is Sensei's Divining Top. This is a decent card in any deck and helps smooth out draws, but with Bolas's Citadel out, now you're going to be able to pay one life to cast Top from the top of your deck after using its draw ability. This basically gives you the ability to pay one life and draw a card. Now add in the best card in our entire deck, Aetherflux Reservoir. All we have to do is pay 50 life and we can just kill a player, but on top of that, Casting spells will gain us life, so that Sensei's Divining Top loop will actually put us at more than enough life to nuke each opponent without any effort at all. It's worth noting that Aetherflux Reservoir, once online, is a huge headache for your opponents to deal with. Someone will have to sacrifice themselves for their opponents, which is not usually a very tempting play to make. And that's the deck. Liesa is a very annoying creature to deal with, and this deck is going to be great for slowly but surely draining opponents out while looking for our infinite combos or single card win conditions. Even if those combos are disrupted, they won't have enough life left to stave off regular attacks and drainings that we'll have waiting in the wings for them. And that's the video. Thanks for watching. Special shoutouts to all of our patrons. You guys make this stuff possible. And shoutouts to our new editor who we're trying out for this video. And just a quick little negative shoutout to Grey Merchant of Asphodel as our card that was so boring and stupid that we benched it, even though it should probably go in the deck. So please forgive us, Grey Merchant. Uh, peace. peace out, Tribe Scout.